So now let's check out another engineering feat right down the road a piece, literally, right over here. And that engineering feat was created before the dam was because this river is tidal only about 20 miles south of here, where Hart, you know, Hartford, Connecticut. Ocean tides go all the way up. And so this was quite a uh, busy river for barge traffic. Of course, when they got to this waterfall, they were stuck. They couldn't get by it. So here, in addition to being the first dam on a major American river, we're going to see the first American canal, successful canal, the Hadley Canal, which is quite a different canal too, by the way. So we're down below the river right now. The, the waterfall is about 200 yards up above where I am now, in the direction of the setting sun. And you can see some stonework here. And this stonework, and you can see it continues on down, and it travels in ruins about two miles to enter the Connecticut River. This is the Hadley Canal, and this was constructed in 1795. It was actually begun in like 1792 with permission or with the permission of the governor of Massachusetts at the time, somebody you've heard of, John Hancock. And a group of investors all along the river had the notion that, you know, if they could only put in a canal above the waterfall, or Holyoke Falls, or the Great Falls, whatever you want to call it, there's some unbelievable agricultural land. Hadley Loam up there, just bumper crops of wheat and tobacco and all kinds of valuable cash crops and vegetable crops. And you couldn't get it by the waterfall, by boat at least. So what they had to do was they had to unload their flat boats and then hoof it, using horses and teams of mules and oxen and you know, a parade of wagons would be traveling along the river, and you know what? By the time they got back into the river, the transport cost had raised the price of anything coming from above the dam to double what it ought to be. In other words, it was cheaper for someone in Hartford, Connecticut, to buy wheat farmed outside of Boston, maybe in Concord, and sent by ship along the coast to Hartford than it would be for Hartford to import wheat from 30 miles up the river. So they needed to do something about this, and they decided on a canal. And the canal they decided on would be quite different, because you can see that this escarpment that they got to get up is quite steep. And they didn't have enough space to build a traditional locked canal. They just didn't have the room. So what they decided to do rather than that was create what you would call an inclined plane, right? A ramp, and they created a special cart. So the cart would be lowered into the river, and into the cart would sail a flat boat. And then the cart would be hooked on using chains and brought up the inclined plane using the power of water wheels and it would enter the river above. The project was quite successful, and this new canal with its odd operating system would last right through the time of the American Civil War when railroads pretty much made it obsolete. This canal, Hadley Canal, was very uh, productive and different from what we'd expect to see. But it's not something so crazy that it's not used today. If you look up the Yenisei River, which is one of the largest rivers in eastern Russia, you'll see that the Yenisei River has also got one of these gigantic inclined plane canal boat lifts. And here we can see a monument for the South Hadley Canal with the inclined plane canal boat. 
check that out. So you can see bigger wheels in the back, smaller wheels up front. So when they lower it into the river, the canal boat can sail on. There's the chain <laughs> and water power tows that contraption up and into the river on the other side and the canal boat sails away. Operational, as I said, from 1795 to 1862. Pretty cool. You stand here and you look out at that water crashing over the falls. Come on. And the birds working here. Think about all the, the minnows and the little fish and probably a sewer leak from Greenfield. All that good stuff. Sewage treatment leak. Another one. It's pretty spectacular. And people don't think about the Connecticut River as uh, as anything more than an inconvenience. They've got to cross bridges. They don't think about the natural beauty and how clean this darn river is if we could just stop the localities from having these surge leaks. Clean Water Act. Every year they get an extension. They get a 10-year extension. Oh, we don't have to do anything now. They're fighting climate change for sure. Even though that might not affect them for 250 years, they're fighting the hell out of that. When they could use their money and get this river cleaned up the way it could be.